can you give a list of things that we should make sure we don't Absolutely. watch? And I, and I think uh, somewhere on your guys' website, I had written up a, like a three-page thing about how your sewer system works. Mm -hmm. I think that, yeah. Is this the one? Okay. okay. Yeah. We can call it eventually.
development in web design. It was called WordPress. And it was a open source software that allowed you to create websites without having to install software on a computer. Before that, you had to be a really knowledgeable web designer. You had to have special software. You had special tools. You had to have a way to edit photos. And usually it involved installing software on everybody's computer. Everybody had a copy. You had to be trained on it, or you had to hire a web designer to make even minute changes. Chris Burton brought me in to um, try this WordPress system, and um, it worked well because we were able to bring your editing in-house and allow you to update and maintain your website to a certain degree. But the technologies have changed. I mean, look at all of this. Within two years when we're using these things now, mm -hmm. I mean, the things that have come about. WordPress was an infant when I um, learned how to use it, and you were the first client that I developed a website with WordPress. Flash forward to 2016, and it's, the technology has changed greatly. And so over a third of websites are being developed with WordPress now, I mean, across the board, across the internet. So it's not something that's going to be going away anytime soon. Um, I like the idea that I can assist people with, I'm, I'm trained as a graphic designer, I'm a print and graphic designer that has to know enough about the web to, to be dangerous. Um, I, like the idea of people in-house working on their websites because nobody knows your business better than you do. Uh, I'm there to assist and guide and train and get people up and running and make design tweaks to have it looking nice for you operationally. Um, but I like working to teach people how to run it. So what we're doing is taking, uh, and if you want to touch on the other screen, you can look at the former website on the other tab. And while it was these knees when we opened it. <laughs> it's very dated, extremely dated. And if you were to open it on a device like an iPad, something like this, it's not that it's not, you can't open it on a website, but in order to get around on a phone or an yeah, iPad, you have to open everything up and you have to scroll through it. It's a sideways, you know. So what we're doing now is making this new design that will fit screens and allow you to get menus and, and oh, um, that is. open <coughs> that are big and easy to read and love them. And I'll come over and drive for a little bit and show off a few things. I don't know how well you'll hear me from over there. I'll just talk well. So some of the biggest issues we've been having is that as your departments grew, there's too many menus and too many sections and things to get to, especially with all the different boards that you have. And so it's very awkward for people to find things. We want to streamline the process and get things cleaner. And so, you know, there's much more white open space, not so many menus. When you click on something like boards now, you're not going to get a big drop down menu. You're going to get a board page with everything off to the side that you can get to and click through for different sections of the website. So you don't have to be navigating up and down and keep going back up here to drop down to a menu. On the home page itself, some of the biggest concerns that were addressed is the ability to find out, you know, urgent messages can be placed here. This doesn't always have to be here, but there'll be um, either photos running or if there's an important message, we can put a reminder here right where people can see it. And as you scroll down, we're developing an icon type of system where you can click here, pay your bill. Oh, that'd be fabulous. Click here, you can go right to your ordinances. We're hoping by using these iconic sort of things rather than menus, it will be easier for people to get around. You go here, you're going to go to a library now that brings up all the minutes and packets and agendas in one area under oh, a table. Excellent. And you, you'll just open your PDS from here. And from um, what I've shown Linda, I think she agrees it's a little easier to upload the minutes and things now too. Much more easier. Okay. Um, from here, you can go right to your YouTube channel. So I know all about your YouTube channel. I just didn't know about the back end of it or how they get loaded to YouTube. I know how to get in there, and I've got information how to, to get around and set things up, but I, not from taking it from your taped version to YouTube. But if you need assistance, I'm willing to learn that portion of it. Um, you've got your citizens dashboard where people can go to your new metrics. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Yeah, that's right. Um, so you can go ahead and, and take a look around at all the information so everything's very transparent. 
I've heard you talking about your meeting here, about being transparent, so hopefully getting access to this information more quickly will allow you to do so. Um, we've got a nice big event calendar now. If you click through to that, you can mouse over and see here's our meeting. You know, the city hall is closed, with your tax bill. By clicking on any of the dates or information, once you get there, you also get a map where the event is taking place. If you care to, you can even click on this more so on a mobile device, and it'll put it right into your own calendar or give you a reminder. Oh, excellent. Um, <coughs> so you can scroll in and you know, take a look at where the, if it's something at the Cedar Springs office, which most of the things are. But we can put community events if, if needed be. It's more of a chamber function to run those sorts of things, which you might be doing something that you want to call attention to. Yeah, I was going to say, we have a process called a community event that we recognize. That would be a nice thing to add to the calendar. Um, back to the home page again. Um, we also, this is something new. I actually um, just finished up a website with Salon Township, and I discovered this. Um, there was a website out in the Michigan area that discussed, they graded websites and municipality websites in particular about how transparent they are to their, to their citizens. And one of the things that they wanted to see was a frequently asked questions board. And so I looked at a couple of local townships that got a high score to see what they had implemented. And I tried, um, I set this up for you. As the questions come in, they can be answered. And then if you, know, if you have a question in a particular area, you can, you know, I'm selling my home. Is there anything else I need to do? And then you're going to get an answer there. Oh, excellent. Now, how do I contact the city assessor? Here's his information. You know, where do I, how do I vote by absentee ballot? So you can open and close each one of these questions and get an answer to it. And it makes a repository library. So as a question comes in and you think, you know what, that would be a great thing. Let's just put, you know, what are the things we get a lot of phone calls on that would be easily be solved by putting them on here in the library? We'll do that. And this is all, you know, a work in progress here. The site is not live yet. We're really close to making it live. I would say within a month. We're ready to make this live. So we'll take it That's what we're hoping for. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Um, and here, there's this, I've taken what you can look at for city meetings or council meetings. It actually pulls from the same calendar, except it takes everything and puts it in a list. So if you only want to see council meetings in a list, you may do so. So it pulls from the same event calendar, but it can streamline particular topics in the calendar and That's pull it helpful. into a list. Um, the only thing that I haven't done yet is I haven't put your contact form in here, but there will be a um, communicative kind of contact form in here. Just We can send to different departments if we want it to. And one last thing that we're thinking about doing is before Tad, Tad put me to the task to put this all together, and then um, I didn't realize he was going to leave in the middle of the project. So Linda had kind of picked up from there and, and working on it. I have purchased um, some software to develop forms with. He wanted to see if we could get some forms online that would be electronically submitted. Um, and I purchased the software to do this. And so we want to take a couple of the forms that are easy to start with and build a couple forms in here um, and see how that works and see how the um, submission process works and how it handles at the other end of the department. Hmm. That would be hugely helpful for like a community event. Yeah, well, or even I, I permit. Sure. If right. you can't get here between 9 and 5. Mm -hmm. right, you know, if you need a permit here, the goal is, but they'll all have to be rebuilt. I would have to take this form, take this new software, which is right. called Gravity Forms, and reconstruct the form in the proper order and then have it um, sent to the proper email that should be receiving the form. Mm -hmm. That's really That's, ingenious. Of course it is. Yes. When we change our city identity, will that be a big issue for you? No, and you'll notice I refrain from putting the use of any logo in here yet because it's been in flux and I didn't know what to do with it. Oh, aren't you fabulous. <laughs> so I've just left it very open-ended and just use a little red throughout the site, but we wanted something very fresh, very different. And so we've kind of done the red, white, and blue patriotic sort of city theme here um, with bits and uses of red. When a final logo design comes in, there's something I'm happy to put it in here for you. Excellent. It looks wonderful. And we'll have more photos. We're working on, on that section. Um, right now, we're going to have two up and running in the slideshow. 
But these um, slides that come up can be targeted to particular areas that you want to call attention to on the website. If you click here, it will take you, to, for example, to the About section. And again, everything, instead of being up here on a drop-down menu, is now off to the side. So if you want to know about the history, you can come in here. Well, thank you. This is wonderful. Does anyone else on the council have any questions? Yeah. Excellent. Very professional, very polished. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you. All right, moving on to item D, motion to approve the rezoning of the following parcels to B3 Highway Business Plan Unit Development Conditional upon the following, the property ownership to be under single control of the Community Building Development Team and a waiver is granted to allow a three-foot building setback from North Main Street. 129 West Maple Street, 180 North 5th Street, 116 North 5th Street, 69 West Maple Street, 65 West Maple Street, 107 North Main Street, 113 North Main Street, 125 North Main Street, 139 North Main Street, 157 North Main Street, 37 West Maple Street, with the corresponding parcel numbers. Madam Chair, I move that we approve the resulting of the following parcels to be three as read by Second. All those, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed say no. Motion carries. On to item E, discussion to use the Red Flannel Town symbol as the official city identity as requested by Councilor Powell. Okay, as an ongoing discussion, um, we have the, the Red Flannel Town symbol is again returned to our city. And uh, this is festival, but it would be Red Flannel Town if we were to use this as part of our city identity, put it back on our stationery, on our website again. And the other one was the lamp post? Yeah, lamp post one, which I can't find. That one. To return that one. I don't, does that have words with it, Red Flannel Town, or that's just that, right? The Red Flannel Town is a separate category. Yeah, the words. I mean, I think right. we're at whatever the words. Red Flannel Town, so you think we should on that? If we were to select that one. Or to use both. Because they're amazing and let us, uh -huh. as part of the contract, use all of the things they hold copyright to. Sure. So that is an ongoing discussion, and hopefully we'll as a, as a, we obviously aren't voting on this at this time, but um, so that we can move it along for the mayor at the next time. Does anyone have any specific preferences of anything? I like the red flannel town in the circle. That's my favorite, but I also really like the lamp post. I would not be opposed if the council wished to go with that one. And maybe we can use them both, or, you know, it doesn't mean we have to have I, I feel like I one. like this on the website. Mm -hmm. It's, especially if we're not going to be confused with the festival itself that uses certainly. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know. That's just my two cents. Do you sure. have an opinion? Mr. Clark? I love it all. Okay. Uh, I do like Perry's idea of uh, changing up that pole with that pole. Yeah. 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 I think that's, uh, they don't have any issues. Just put it in the middle and then put yeah. Cedar Springs on either mm -hmm. side. Yeah. That's my own town. And again, I think that's uh, yeah. So should we work something up in that department and see how that flies? Or we, that? we can. Bob, do you have a thought? Uh, a preference? No problem. Okay. Do you want to draw that for him, Bob? Do you want to draw that for him? Well, this is our initial discussion. Um, we weren't voting on anything. Is, uh, wh where would you like it to go as we talk about it again in the next month? Are we talking specifically about stationary? Do you want to talk specifically about, as we ask Linda to move forward, to put it on the next agenda? I would say stationary, our business cards. Um, we talked about uh, signs on our trucks. This, you know, which we could use, which, where, how, I don't know. Um, our our, our uh, vehicle identity. Not that we have to go scraping anything off or tearing off patches or anything as they were replaced. Yeah, as, right. as they were naturally replaced. There's no money in the budget to do this this current budget year. When right. we buy we're not new stationery, we buy new stationery on a regular basis. And mm -hmm. yeah. 
But it would, so it would just be as we bought. Replace the next stationery. We would not suggest that we throw out just because. It would be when we go to replace it. And as we move forward on the website, that kind of thing. The department obviously has their patches. I see no reason to change anything with the fire department. Yeah, they do. There's just the county. And I don't know about <laughs> we have no say in <laughs> Which I think you look very fabulous in your county uniform. <laughs> I have no complaints. <laughs> so I, I really don't know what all we can use or... We'd be starting probably with the website and then stationery. You didn't mention the street signs. Oh, that's yeah, a yeah. huge budget yeah. that we'll have to... That's not in this use. I, yeah. I would like to know how much those stickers cost. If we could replace them over what the existing the red ones were, the same red ones to buy those, the city spent like $1,400. Right. And while I agree, I would like to see the street signs go back to the way they were, we need to do this on an as needed basis. Yeah, so right. cannot and, and those street signs are quite old. Right. Well, I mean, I mean, so the need may come up sooner right. or later. That's what later, I was going to say. I would be more inclined to look at it when we go to replace street signs right. in the future in the right. future that we examine it then right. so if somebody knocked down a street sign say next week would we have something to put on there that that had the red flannel stickers so we had the stickers if someone knocked down a street sign i think yeah. we would put it back up but i mean if it was <laughs> if it was destroyed <laughs> if it was destroyed <laughs> would we have some in stock red flannel stickers one way or the other, put back on. Well, we can discuss stickers again okay. at the next start. But I think at the moment we're looking more at the website and stationery. Okay. So I'll try to get a couple things uh, in order and we can have two and we can decide where to use them and how to use them. Uh, sure. Mr. Clark? Did we uh, talk at all to Linda or anybody on the staff about what our paper products, level are, so that we know kind of how far out in the future we're looking to do this. We just replaced um, a thousand envelopes. We just got those. Okay. And about how long does that last? Goodness, how often does she order? I don't know. It it several months. Okay. okay. Several months. Stationary? Where are we on stationary? Stationary we make in house. Okay. So that would be one that wouldn't be. We could change it whenever. If you don't have a huge supply. Mm -hmm. Just whatever anyone happens to have stuff And again, yeah, we would advocate using that out. We wouldn't say So what is the process to change that symbol this year? I just have to redesign what we're using. So you do redesign so I, I just want Deb, Deb, I want you to know we aren't going to go out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars. This will be a gradual, practical. We have to make some decisions about okay. what are we going to make. What are, as things what come up, what are we replacing it with? We want to be reasonable and rational. Oh, of course. So as we move forward, think about what you want to see where so that we can have that conversation as each thing comes up. So it sounds like the next thing probably when we talk about it next month is the stationery and, and what do you, and the website and what do you want to see in those specific places. All right, moving on to item F. Discussion regarding the video policy is requested. Do you feel like we've mostly covered that ground in the workshop? No. Okay. I don't because Tom said he'd take care of it, but Tom, more if you're on vacation, more if you're sick. What we need to get a timeline. I know we have 10 days. Um, do we need some extra time for staff? Um, we have 10 days, but maybe we could say let's have five business days. I kind of get kind of tired of waiting for it. Um, five business days for after city council be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, no, Friday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, five business days. Which is basically a week for our meeting. Right. Which is reasonable. I don't know what the rest of you think, but at least we're within the 10-day limit. And um, 
I would know that, you know, after five days, there it is for our citizens or anybody else to say, here, five days. Tom might be on vacation, he might have a broken leg. Who knows? We should have some kind of a... Mr. Clark? Um, I think as far as, you know, Tom being overburdened with too much to do, or if he does have an emergency or something, he can't do the work. I think Linda said that she's going to look into alternative backup plans, right? So that would solve that. Yes, she issue. said she would come back to us. That yeah, was what that, we were discussing in the workshop. And I think that's going to be a, you know, we're talking about a temporary solution right now. Do we get a manager and phase it back to normal staff and comes back up? Um, I think on the time frame, I, you know, I think right now, I think I'm willing to settle for five days. Five business days. Like myself, I've been working at it in you know, the last couple of months to get on there because I think I'm stuck. Right. It's not on the fault of anybody working on it. Yeah, right. I, you know, I have no problem with letting it go the way it's going as long as we don't chronically have pickup. Yeah, I think the difficulty was, for me, I didn't know there was a hiccup until we were past this like, I kept saying, we'll just wait, it's coming. And then you find out, oh, sorry, no, it's not. Just kidding. So that was sort of the difficulty in not understanding until after the 10-day window that it wasn't coming at all. Well, it's not a blank game here. No, but I'm saying I think that's part of what, okay. part of what we're feeling was that it felt longer even because we didn't understand that that's what was happening, that there were some difficulties in that. We were trying to articulate it to people asking you. No, it's okay. Do you, do you want to speak to it? No, I was just, it wasn't a 10 day window, it was the accounting. Sure. I, I completely understand. I'm saying on the communication piece of it. So when someone in the frozen food section is asking me why haven't why isn't this video up? And I'm like, well, it should be. It will be soon. It just we're not there yet. And then, oh wait, just kidding. Sorry, it's not coming. Or if I could have said we had a problem, it's not coming. So I think that's part of what we're feeling from the the pushback from the community. And if I, I know it sounds crazy that they sit at home and watch us, but they apparently do. I don't know if there's like really good beer from the pub that you can <laughs> makes this seem more exciting, but I don't know. But <laughs> there you go. I wonder if we're a drinking game. That's what I'm kind of curious. <laughs> Mr. Clark. Terry's comment. So, you know, we've kind of set up uh, a front row, a front uh, order of how we're going to deal with it from now on. Or, and it's already been in place, so we're right. not really doing anything to me but we have a backup as well. But now, as far as the glitches that we did face, those problems are all solved, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so we shouldn't see that again. We should be wonderful. Yeah, we haven't had any problem that it has been up immediately after meetings, at least by the Monday following the council meeting, up or some January. Yeah, which has been amazing. And one other question. Now, that um, is a license that somehow got biased. Is that now, who, who's the computer, will that come up on? Or does the company even warn us? Or is that totally on us for a number? It's been embedded in, in Carrie's brain. I told her all the time. It's in her calendar. But yes, they did not give us I was going to say, it's not her no, fault. If they don't it's send a thing it's saying, hey, it's just, just going to. I told her to put it on a particular file. I won't be here in December. And um, she'll be able to come up. So it's happening. You'd think they'd want their money. Uh, I think, right? You'd think they'd be like, in 60 days. You heard about that extension, right? Final census on it? I don't know. Just think if you want to get paid. You'd say, hmm, you're going to expire, and, you know, we wouldn't get a check from you if you expire. But, guess not. So, alrighty. So, do we feel like we're good on this? Yeah, I think, you know, five business days is reasonable. Well, I think what we're saying right now is we're going to leave it as is with Linda coming up with a backup plan for in the event that 
um, Terry and or Tom, whatever, there will be like a chain of command, that they're going to come back and tell us what that is. And then when we have this, what I said from the rest of the council, when we have a full-time manager in, we can maybe lock that down a little bit more on time frame. Does that sound appropriate? All righty. Moving on to new business. And this is the, and we need to have some clarification. Motion to waive policy 12 to act on an amendment. To the, oh, sorry. Yes, we, have, we changed the agenda. It is, it is Mr. Ringler coming to speak to us about a community event of some sort. Motion to adjourn the meeting and retire to the brewery at North. All in favor. As long as you got those Brussels sprouts. Dave Ringer, 95 North Main. Actually, um, in speaking with um, our city manager, really a little guidance that we have an event that we are planning coming up on April 2nd. One thing that we need to add action on right now, it's entirely on our property. Uh, we reviewed a couple of the ordinances, I think, today that may affect this. The biggest one would be noise. Uh, we would like to do outdoor music in, our, in, a, in a tent in our parking lot. Um, that would obviously go into the evening, and the ordinance, I believe, limits uh, music beyond 300 yards to 7.30 in the evening. This would be a Saturday evening event. Um, so I don't know, the thought was either to create a public event with this, um, which would avoid um, having to get variances, or whether we get the variance for the numbers. You can, as a community event, uh, and again, I think we need to go back, that seems to keep falling through the cracks. We have some language that was created to create a community event. We do also have a application for a community event. They don't exactly talk nicely to each other, but we can deal with that. I think that's that. the question, whether it's going to be, this is entirely on our property. Well, it allows you to read ordinances. Would, and I think that's kind of the idea, whether it's better off to just go ahead and do this or start picking through the ordinances and having to where if you become a community event, you can fill out the forms and request to be a community event and then tell us the ordinances you would like waived as part of that community event. Okay, fair enough. I know we'll have to, we will have to go through MLCC as well because our license will be extended into the lot beyond where the regular borders are. Um, and as community event, you, know, you can request using public access areas. You can, um, I know the Ren Fair has used the park, the Red Flannel Festival uses I don't, Everywhere. I don't think we need those, we need those, we need those things. But we, the are, we are looking out the four of these throughout the year, so there will be a couple of things. And I believe you can file for one with multiple dates. Okay. You can get some clarification on that with the city manager, but you can say, and then we would put them on our website as being community events that occur at this location, at this said town, mm -hmm. as a way of letting people know this fabulous community event is occurring. Well, and that's kind of what I'm asking, what we prefer, what's going to be the easiest way to, to uh, make sure we're on the same page. Uh, I, guess I, I guess we have to look at the forms that we have right now if we could talk to Linda about which would be the appropriate form for you to use if you want to explain the norms. We went through a batch of them today. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's helpful. That's what we're kind of asking, Very which good. is going to be the better route. It sounds like you're saying you prefer will, that we do a community We will facilitate whatever us. works for you. But I, of course, am always in favor of community events because I think they're wonderful for our community. I think it's a great way to showcase the fabulous things that happen and let people know it's happening and put it on our website. Oh, nice. They bring people to talk. So. Yeah. Well, and... The community event will take the youth. The community event. No, it's fine. That's what I'm saying. I'm just asking what is going to be easier for to get, you know, to make sure that we're all on the same page, whether we do the one form and the bad. I don't know what we're entirely on private the property. The city manager could tell you what's easier. She said ask for guidance. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm not as familiar. Again, I know that we've had some complications with the form. I just call out the community event form. So good. For the sake What's of the, the form for um, events that Molly always has good questions, so I'm interested in this. Go ahead. So for the sake of policy 12, because this is going to be in April and... We sh I shouldn't be anything today. I've been, I sent well, emails to my attorney what, what for please? guidance on MLCC is the only thing that I'm worried about timing on, but at the moment I, I'm not. I understand. But for our sake, to help facilitate you. So it is now the February meeting. 
this would have to be the first consideration to get this approved for April without us having to waive policy 12. So, in the instance of making that happen for you, do you happen to know the times? This would be uh, April the 2nd. Okay, do you know how late it would go in the evening? It would go for, well, 1 till probably 8 or 9 o'clock. 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night? Yeah. Okay, so we're... Let's say 9 o'clock at night to be generous. So. Okay, so 9 o'clock at night. So, to be clear, I would like this to count as first consideration. I think it's an excellent first as consideration. A community yeah. event on That's April strategy. the 2nd. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, until 9 p.m. at night for Cedar Springs Brewing Company. Does this community event have a name? A shock field test. We're working a shock. We're everybody's journal. Yeah. Shock field test. traditionally in March, but the weather's better. Sure. Yeah. Excellent. For a Cedar Springs shock field test. And I'm sure I said that completely incorrectly. Oh, we'll work on it by the time we get there. We will. Good. Well, there. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to item B. A motion to waive, and again, we will need to have this conversation. Motion to waive policy 12 to act on an amendment to the license and development agreement with the community building development team at first consideration. My initial feeling is we do not need to waive policy 12 because I have read this more times than I can tell you. But if the council feels that it is in the light of transparency, we need to do that. I am willing to entertain that motion. I just don't know. I, I don't see why we can't go ahead with the uh, approve the amendment to the license and then Okay, so hearing none regarding motion to waive policy 12, I will be moving on to a motion, a motion to approve an amendment to the license development agreement with the community building development team. The motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Motion carries. Moving on to item C. Motion to waive policy 12 and resolution 2016. A resolu oh, we, we struck this one, so I don't even have to have the discussion about it. Motion to approve resolution 20. Uh, we're not going to be a motion discussion on a resolution in opposition of Public mm -hmm. Act 269. I open the floor to discussion. Oh, yes. I will go first. Pastor Nixon. Nixon. So, um, in January, Governor Snyder signed a bit of legislation that would effectively ban all public officials from discussing ballot initiatives 60 days before the ballot. I find this to be inherently undemocratic, as many things that this particular governor has chosen to do are. I specifically remember <laughs> an instance where he asked us to endorse one of his airbrained schemes. <laughs> And we unanimously declined after quite a bit of discussion. So it didn't benefit him, and now he doesn't want us to do it anymore. I feel that's very, I'm taking my ball and going home. Okay. Would anyone wish to follow up on Councilor Nixon's comments? Mr. Clark. Um, I think that from talking, I'll just read first of all, but this is a few and wrote back to me and my question. I said, what can you tell me about any changes you think should be made to PA 269? And very briefly said, I think local units should be able to provide factual information, but not advocate for or against a proposal with tax dollars. That is, here's what the proposal is, and here's what it does. I have no problem with that, so long as it, it is not an advocacy piece. Now, that last statement to me is the crux of uh, why the legislators, legislators might have felt this, this needed to be dealt with. I have seen several, at least, across the, well, across the nation, actually, but not just... Including the one that Councilor that Nixon made, just mentioned regarding the government. Well, I wasn't speaking of that particularly. <laughs> I was speaking of, uh, say, public school uh, millages. Uh, even for libraries, municipalities needing money. Obviously, they have a dog in the fight. They want that thing to pass. And so when they write 
their supposedly unbiased description of the fors and against, pros and cons, they can't help but say, you know, well, if we don't get this money, you know, we're going to fire teachers, or we're going to have to um, stop certain services. And by doing that, they are saying, they're, they're twisting the arm of the public saying, yeah, you better do this or else. We're going to fire policemen. We're going to fire firemen. So I think that's what the legislators were trying to do. But they did it so poorly. And to be they clear, there's already approved. legislation advocating that but you should not advocate. But it's obviously not clear, and it's not, it's not being applied in the courts very strictly. Thank you, Jason, for being strict. Not you, Jason, the other Jason that was here. <laughs> Speaking of strict. It's not applied narrowly? Not applied narrowly. And I think so, that's why they felt like they needed to do something. But in the end, it's so many pages, like 40 extra pages. And it didn't really have anything to do, so... All electronic communication, which is yeah. our YouTube. And what did you tell me on the phone was the main uh, thrust of the original 12-page His original bill was a campaign finance bill that was supposed to allow legislators to roll money that they had been donated from one campaign into the next. That was the initial primary piece of it. And on the last day of the... Uh, and they, by the way, have a policy yeah. to not vote on something that has been voted on in one house then, until the next day. And they, they, they read that and push it through. I, I just think it was done badly. Yeah. And by the way, there was no printed copy of this bill. So none of them had read it because when the press asked for a printed copy, it did not exist. We were told it was going to be good and it didn't happen. It wasn't going to be much different. So we can pass it. So they seem to be unclear as to actually who even wrote what parts of it. Fascinating. Yes, it's wonderful. And I can personally say that in the words of a good friend of mine, this is a hill I'm willing to die on. <laughs> and should, for some reason, the court not uphold my First Amendment rights, I will be exercising them on YouTube, and they will have to arrest me to stop me. They have already made some amendments, or proposed some amendments, and you said Rob Hewlin is proposing some. He is. I don't know if they can clean it up well enough. The court seems to feel that they need to go back to the starting clock. And the bread and water gets better in real court. I understand that it does. This is the hill I am willing to die on. This is my First Amendment right. I, no, no. Do we have any additional comments? Mr. Truesdale. On the bill. You're good. <laughs> okay. Mr. Hopkins. I don't like him. I understand. I personally feel very constrained that the state is trying to tell us as a council what we are and aren't allowed to discuss with our constituents and when we're allowed to do it. It feels more else should a, a resident go? I, I have no idea. To the local. If you cannot ask me a question and I cannot answer it honestly without the threat of going to jail, I do. I have no words. And that's saying something. But we already have a law, like you said. We do. We have a law that already constrains us and tells us we have to have a very unbiased, picture of what this law that, or what the uh, and, policy is and, going to do. And as schools and municipalities and libraries, if we were advocating, even in this, the capacity which you're suggesting, at some point, that's a moral imperative against our constituents for which they would want to remove us. If we didn't inform. Correct. Yeah. Or we inform them incorrectly. Mm -hmm. If we try to sway them in a way that was not beneficial to the community, that's not, we're, we're violating our oath of office. Well, as a clerk, I can't even tell anyone who put, who's on the ballot if they ask me a question. That's horrifying. And it, it goes so far as to say all electronic media, which means if I post something on Facebook saying, please go vote, that could be construed as not complying with the law. That's exceedingly problematic in my estimation. So those are my final comments. Anyone else have any piece of that? 
All right, I think, and I'm grateful that we are going to be talking about this again. I will be meeting with Representative Bertillon on Monday while I am on my midwinter break to have lunch with him and discuss this along with the EFM law. So I've been appreciative of his responsiveness to our council. So moving on to item D, a motion to waive policy 12 to act on the purchase of a box, 12 inch box plow at first consideration. Any dis the motion has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The, no. Okay. the motion carries five to one. So now moving on to the motion regarding the box law. Mo a motion to approve the purchase of box 12 inch box, box, box 12 inch box plow. Wow, that's like foot. a tongue twister. 12 foot box foot plow from Weingart in an amount not to exceed $5,339.20. Do I have a motion? I move that we approve uh, the purchase of the box 12 foot box, uh, box plow from Weingart. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Any questions for Tom? Um, just brief discussion um, back to policy 12. You're too quick for me. Um, there is some wiggle room here that we're going to need to clean up with policy 12 because it was budgeted, but it wasn't specifically budgeted. So we've sort of discussed this before, even though it wasn't specific. So moving on. <laughs> You gotta right. forgive me for a second because I got this picture in my head of a little mouse and a 12 foot plow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, okay. Sorry, can we avoid the mice? Those are worth the cheese. This is the box plow. You see them in, uh, on yeah. motors and a bunch of parking lots. It just uh, gives us the, uh, a little bit more efficiency when it comes to doing things like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
again, I have to agree with counsel that it's probably not necessary to waive the policy at all, but the money's in the budget. It's like the motor pool only money for equipment purchasing. Okay. Just to clarify where we're at, do we vote on policy 12? Yeah, we have to vote. Okay. So, any other discussion on policy 12? My final opinion on this is that if it's not specifically named in the budget, then if we're going to pass it on one hearing, then it needs to go through the policy 12. Okay. Counselor Powell? That's all I do. I believe this is a motion that needs to be expedited and for the fire department to get the equipment, so I would certainly uphold it. Okay. Any other discussion? So, all those in favor say goodbye by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Motion carries. Moving on to the motion to approve the purchase of firefighter personnel protection gear from the Allied Sales in an amount not to exceed $1,800. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Chief Frazier, I would like to say you are amazing in getting more people onto our fire department. It is incredible to me that so many people are willing to run into buildings that are on fire that the rest of us are running out of, and I am eternally grateful for that. Well, this is incredible. Because you got more people. And I think if we have new people that come on board, they should have boots. That seems appropriate to me. I'm with you, but I'm saying even if OSHA didn't say that, I think they ought to have boots. So, yes, Counselor Clark. So, Allied gave you a really reasonable price, and you would expect that they would have given you a price again if you had to go off the base for this? What I figure out, Bill, is we have some gear that's still good for, I think, nine or ten months. What I will do is have you two recruit and use that gear, and then see where they're at at that time. And if I may lose two of them, I may lose one of them, I may not lose any of them, before I go out and stick $3,000 into a motor and get a cold form. Got it. But right now, I do not have helmets and boots to sit down with what we have for cold form. And what about air packs? Air packs are universal. We've got plenty of air packs. You've got plenty. Okay. I see a nod from somebody in the back there. He says that you're right. Do you need his agreement? That's my point. He's smiling good. He says, I was amazed that these four people have come to me all at once, and I don't know if I mentioned earlier, I have to try and stand up here and take up a lot more time, but the reputation must have meant something, because they've had opportunities to go to the different departments, and they chose ours. And like I mentioned earlier, two to three to five years, I figured I'd lose them. Three to five people. Well, that is a testament to you, Chief, and to your squad, and the shift that you run. And, again, thank you for that. As I said, I had reason to avail myself of your services the night before Christmas Eve in the middle of the night, and your response time is excellent, just so you know. Well, I will pass it on to the members. However, I can't take full credit for that, because they do what they want to do. They do what they do because they want to do it. Yeah, let's get that. But if you so, I will order this stuff tomorrow, and hopefully it will be here within the next... Any other discussion? Okay, I'm going to take a roll call vote, since this pertains to money. Mr. Clark? Yes. Ms. Howell? Yes. Ms. Nixon? Yes. Mr. Truesdale? Yes. Mr. Hopkins? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Thank you. Thank you for keeping us safe. On to the manager's report. General information and special projects. Well, just to highlight some of the items that I included in my report, just to remind you about the MML conference coming up in March. We've signed Dan up. If any of the rest of you want to go, let me know, and we can get that taken care of for you. 
I would like to know about access to MML certifications and so on regarding online. Is that something you don't have to tell me the second, but is that something you could get some more? And I think that you can get certification. That's online. my understanding. If you could look into that for me, that would be amazing because mm -hmm. it's difficult for me to take off school to like go be somewhere, but I would gladly. I've got a 3 a.m. slot open. You <laughs> going to school and well, four year old and work full time. Anything to add? Deb's um, started to work 